Uh, my name is Jose Antonio uh, Padilla. I've been working for Nature Trek since 2011. I would like to also thank Paul, Team, and Ricardo. Well, Ricardo has been great to, to know about Argentina. I didn't know the great wildlife you also have there, my friend. So thank you very much for sharing with all of us. So in this opportunity, I am going to be talking about Peru Western Andes, right? And it's particularly a tour that we offer, a nature trek offer that is called Surf and Tour, okay? Because we do a little bit of the Western Andes of uh, Central, Central Peru, and then we go down to uh, Southern of Lima, which is the capital of the country, and uh, to a nice um, protected area called Paracas. Okay, so I'm going to go through the tour and um and i start with the map as usual um this is a map of peru uh, peru is the third largest country of south america after brazil and argentina of course and uh, we have three main regions really you no know, the uh, coastal region which is actually desert uh, is basically the coastal region of peru it's the extension of the patagonia uh, desert that comes from chile and goes all the way up you know, and um, and before, you know, it reaches the very um, farther part north of the country, you know, the habitat and scenery changes a little bit because uh, we have the Humboldt current that is coming up from the south. And uh, before it reaches the north, it turns left and goes down. And in that area, you know, because it meets the other current coming from the north, that is the Nino current, you know, there's a, a handful of their sort of um, ecology uh, habitat that we create some sort of forests up in the north of Peru, but the rest down south is all the is only desert. Okay, then we have the uh, Andes coming throughout the country, and on the very western side of the uh, Peru, we have the Amazon rainforest that covers more or less forty percent of our territory. So in this tour, we start in Lima, you know, uh, which is the capital of Peru. So every flight, you know, from Europe, from USA, and even from the UK will come and uh, arrive in Lima, Peru. Uh, Lima is the capital that is in front of the ocean, in front of the Pacific Ocean. And that's where we start the tour. As you can see here in this circle that I made, is very much, you know, what we cover in this particular tour. So we go Western Andes, right? And we go down South to the Paracas National Reserve and we cover these two amazing habitats. So a lot of people think of Peru, you know, in a way of the Incas, right? Up in the Andes, the mountains and the Amazon rainforest. No many people think of Peru, you know, in, in, in on the Western uh, uh, slopes and side because there's nothing really there, apparently, but we have a lot to offer. And this is why I'm here to talk about, you know, in this very short uh, time that I have. So the tour starts in Lima, but before we go through the tour, I will uh, like to uh, show you this, limit, this uh, a small drawing that actually explain a little bit how, you know, Peru um, is made in terms of um, habitats, right? Uh, on the western slopes and western part of the country, it's very dry, sorry, it's very dry and desert. You know, uh, we have some rivers going down into the Pacific Ocean from the Andes, right? In fact, we have eight, 28 rivers coming down into the Pacific Ocean. And only along this river is we, where, where we have some life and some vegetation growing. The rest is just desert, as I already said. Right in the middle, no, of Peru, we have the Andes, right, which is all very high in elevation, you know, a lot of grassland up there, and um, this area which not so much diversity, right, but still some very good birds. And on the eastern slope of the Andes, down on the um, right-hand side of the screen, we have the uh, fantastic uh, mega-diverse cloud forest, as well as the Amazon rainforest down south, no? So this is very much how Peru looks like if we make a cut, you know, through the country. And um, so showing the three main regions that we have here. So the reason why we don't 
have any sort of vegetation growing on the western slope of the Andes is basically because of the Humboldt current. As I said, now the Humboldt current comes from south of South America and goes all the way up, you know, along the coast of Peru, bringing very, very cold water. So, so because of the cold water, there is not enough condensation and there's not enough heat, you not know, to make a sort of, you know, a lot of clouds on the western side. And therefore, nothing really grows around except for, you know, vegetation growing along the rivers. So, but yet, you no, know, uh, we have uh, also some good birds, especially Peruvian endemics that live on this size, not on this side of the mountains, on in this part of the country. So here is a closer map of what we're doing, you no, know, on this uh, tour. We start in Lima, the capital, right? That you can see here on the left. And first of all, we go east of Lima, and in only three hours, we are at the base of the mountains there. And from there, we start climbing up, you know, into the western slopes of the Andes. And we are going to do, um, and we're going into this nice sort of valley called Santa, Ul Santa Eulalia River Valley that you can see here, you know, um, in, the, in the center. Uh, from Santa Eulalia Valley, we're going up, you know, north, a, like a northwest, I would say. And we're going to go through Guachupampa, you know, all around up over, you know, 5,000 meters in elevation, about 14,000 feet. And then we're going back onto the central highway to San Mateo, which is an Andean town about 9,000 uh, 9, feet. And after spending two nights here, we're going back to Lima. And then we're coming down south of Lima into the Panamericana Highway in order to reach the Paracas National Reserve, which is where we're finishing the tour, really. So <clears throat> that's very much what we do. We don't go farther east, farther north. We're just doing these two main parts of the country. And here is a, a, a picture of Lima, the capital of Peru, that is very much facing you know, the Pacific Ocean, as you can see there. The road that you can see down on the left of the uh, picture is the road that will actually go through the whole city. And we make like, um, you know, a very nice sort of um, a, a non traffic like road that will take you from north to south and will cut through the whole city actually looking over the ocean and try to see some of the birds we have here. So this is what we do the first day of the tour, you know? And just along that road that I showed you earlier, um, there are a couple of places that you can stop. And um, then one of the first birds that you can actually see there is this fantastic Inca tern. Uh, uh, because of the beautiful colors, you know, for some people it's supposed to be the most beautiful, the most beautiful turn in the world. So you have these nice pictures on the face, as you can see, the glob, they all look like they have like a, like a mustache there and a yellow spot just under the eye. And we have this cliff where we can get big colonies of Inca terns just right next to the road, which is amazing. Another bird we're looking for is this Peruvian endemic um, surf Synclodes. This is a member, I mean, this is a bird member of the open bird family that live on the coast and right by the ocean that is usually found just jumping or hopping around the rocky areas that we have by the shore. So it's a little bit hard to get, but in some spots that I know, we can get it easily. Another fantastic bird that is also along the coast of, of Lima, just, just outside the city, is the uh, Peruvian thickney, no, uh, no endemic to Peru, found also in Chile and Ecuador in some areas, but they are um, a type of plover and weather that is mainly nocturnal. And because of the sandy coloration that it has, it blends in so well with the sand, no, on uh, the beach that we have down there. And it's sometimes tricky to find it, no, but in some areas we actually, and know where it live, and we look for it with a successful way to find it. Uh, in some parts of the uh, of the city of Lima, before we go up to the Andes, uh, we we will stop in a um a certain sort of um, villa marshes, you know, some sort of marshes 
that are by the ocean. And this is another bird easy to get there. That is the many color rash tiger, also known as the seven color of the reeds. Now it's a bird that lives just inside the reeds. So it's, and I'm there. And with a little bit of luck, we get it out. We can create pictures like this. Another place that we go and visit, going down, sorry, going down um, south of Lima, about 45 miles, is Pucusana, which is a fishing bay, no? And the reason why we're going down there is to try to see Humboldt penguins. This is a species of penguin, it's endemic to the Humboldt current, no? That live along the coast of Peru, down in Chile as well, and in some part of Ecuador. So this is a, a nice view of all the artisanal boats that uh, are out there in Pucusan in this fishing bay that we can all see what we get there. And it's in fact in one of these boats, sorry, in one of these boats that we are gonna go for a, a small boat ride, like you can see here, to see all these um, birds around like Peruvian pelicans, belchers, doll that come very, very close to the boat. And we can create we can get great pictures of it. Inca turns up. all around. And as I said, you know the humble ping from uh, uh, the shore. So uh, you can see Peruvian pelicans here. How they come into actually catch some fish, you no, know, by the boat. And uh, we can also try some of the Peruvian gastronomy in this place after this little boat ride that we do. We're going to have a nice uh, a lunch in a seafood restaurant nearby all down in this little town of Pucusana. And we can try things like ceviche, which is up on the top left. Uh, apparently ceviche, you know, is, well, ceviche is made from Mexico all the way down to Chile, but apparently Peruvian ceviche is by far the best of all of them. And um, we also have some, you know, nice uh, seafood uh, that I serve in these restaurants. So if you know, Lomo Saltado here down, you know, in the lower part of the screen. So this is what we try and we, we taste after the bull, right? And this is a picture of the Humboldt penguin that was taken by me really close. So we can get really close to this, to this uh, species of penguins on the islands around, you no? Know? And uh, they don't seem to care much about us. So we can get great, great pictures of it. And um, as I said, this place that we're going to see there is only 45, 45 miles down south of, of Lima. And um, it's only like half an hour, 45 minutes to get there by car. So it's actually easy to get. Huge, huge number of sea lions all seeing in the islands around, you know, uh, and as you can see. And after spending time in the coast of Lima, right, the first day, and after having a great lunch there, as you already seen, we're going. Uh, we start going up, you no, know, and start climbing towards the western slope of the Andes. So, and this is a picture of the Santulalia River Valley. So you see down there the Santulalia River, and as I already said at the beginning, right? So we have 28 rivers going down from the Andes into the Pacific Ocean, and in every river that we have. There's along the river, there's some green and vegetation, a lot of life, uh, you know, inside these trees and inside all these bushes. But as you get past this tree line, it's so dry and nothing else growing around. As you can see, only few vegetations and there, there are a lot of good birds around. This is a, a photo of um, the road, you know, that will take us into the Santa Olaglia River Valley. Now, once we get off the main central highway, we go into this dirt road and we start going up. The road is, you know, like a classic Andean road. And um, we're going slowly, however, and it can be a little bit bumpy in some areas, but we make a lot of burning stops as we are going up, you know, to get some of the birds, some of the birds around that this fantastic Peruvian pick me out, for instance, that is always around and it responds very well to play back. It comes and it lands, you know, usually in wires like this, you know, Peruvian pick me out is around. And one of the uh, five uh, species of Inca finches that are found in Peru, you know, the great Inca finch, um, we, they are 
five species of Inca finches in the world. And um, in this tour that we're doing, we have a chance for one of the five, which is the great Inca finch. The other four species are found in Northern Peru. And that's it, period, you know? So if you do uh, this trip, uh, the, to get the great Inca finch is, is quite easy, in fact. So as we're going, we stop for these birds, you know? And um, then we stop in one little Andean town, which is called Huachupampa, which is about 3,000 meters in elevation or 10,000 feet, more or less. It's a, a, a small Andean town, and there's only one hotel there, which is owned by the city hall, which is the place where we're staying only for one night. No, the place is basic. Um, they um, don't provide breakfast or any sort of food, but we do bring a lot of food for the trip. And our drivers are very good, you know, cooking meals out in the field, no? So there's no problem about it. So we can stand there, stay in this little town, uh, even though, uh, there's not probably a lot of restaurants around, but we do, we will have a lot of good food made by our drivers and myself sometimes to give a little bit of help. Uh, I'm, I'm facing a super mega bear for Peru that is around uh, this, you know, little town of Huachupampa way up in the, in the Andes will be, and uh, this Rufus breasted wobbling finch that we're always looking for uh, is a bird that is, you know, highly localized, is very rare to find. But early in the morning when we start the birding, usually we find it up there in the trees, eating or singing quite a lot. So um, another bird we're looking for around, you know, uh, this high elevation area is the white chicotinga, which is another super mega bird for Peru. It's a Peruvian endemic. It lives mainly in the Polylepis forest. No, that we have nearby, and um, it's usually found perched up in the top of the through the forest. Uh, we actually find it there perched. You know, Polylepis is a, a native tree from the Andes of South America. Uh, means you know, poly means many, uh, lepis means bark, and it's a slow growing tree that grows over you know the 4,000 meters in elevation way up there. And that's what the bird is found, you know? The folly lepid forests are a lot protected in Peru and South America for different um, conservation groups that we have around. Another amazing Peruvian endemic that we can find is the black-breasted hill star. Easy to see. It comes down sometimes to the ground to feed on these little, you know, flowers that we have growing very close to the ground. And it perch like this most of the time, and we can easily see through the scopes. Through the scopes, they are fantastic. As I was saying you before, uh, we do have a lot of, um, especially in the first part of the tour, we do have a lot of uh, meals out in the field. No, we bring with us uh, the camping chairs, the tables, and all that. A lot of food. And, you know, our drivers are well prepared to make food there and have very good breakfast and lunch if it's the case. You know, so you can have a, a, a lunch there in, out in the field, looking at the mountains, looking at the bird, photographing the area. It's just amazing, no? In a way, here's another, you know, um, breakfast. I think we might have just lost Jose. The connection has gone for me. I can't hear him anymore. Oh dear. And we were just learning about breakfast as well and a breakfast at altitude. What a shame. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to come back. I don't know if he's going to be he able got to be Oh, Jose, Jose, you're here. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Hi, Jose, we can't hear you. I can see you talking though. But I can't hear anything. You were just telling us all about breakfast. That's what I had on my screen anyway. How about now? 
Yeah, I can, can hear you now. Can, can you hear me? Sorry, I don't know what happened. I got disconnected. Yeah, far away. Okay, good, good, good. And uh, well, here is the, um, I think I was talking about, um, hold on a second. I was talking about this nice breakfast we had in the field after seeing this fantastic um, plover, you no, know, the uh, sandpiper plover that is live around this area. Um, is um, highly lo localized in this part of the country as well in Chile and Argentina, a little bit in Bolivia as well. I'm not sure if it's in Argentina, but it's in Chile and Bolivia. And um, yeah, I mean, some of the, my friends that were talking before me also talk about this bird because it's just amazing. I have had people on this tour who just came and joined me just to see this little bird that is found way over in the mountains and in these boggy you know, habitats that we have around. So another uh, super mega bird for uh, Peru uh, is this white belly synclode. This uh, looks a little bit like uh, maybe a mockingbird. It lives way up in the mountains as well. Uh, there's a population, I think less than 1,000 individuals left and it's highly localized up there. And I know the spots where to spot and where to stop and actually find them, you know? Um, we have also uh, some species of, for example, Ampita. This is the striped headed Ampita. Uh, that is uh, also found there, easy to see. It's, it's one of the probably easiest Ampita to actually get uh, in South America, the striped headed Ampita. Uh, another uh, fantastic bird that is easy to see way up there in the western top of the Andes on this tour that we do is the great breasted sea snipe. No, uh, uh, it actually comes out easy to get and we can photograph like this. So it's the rufous belly sea snipe. No, another Aussie species of, of sea snipe we can get in these tours. You know, it's just a matter of looking well and it's going to be there. No, it's and also knowing the spot where to stop and get it. So then um, after we spend the time in the, um, like four days in the Western slopes, uh, in the Western Andes of, of Peru, close to Lima, you now as you can see here in the map, we're going back to Lima for one night, you know, to have a little break as well, to change some clothes and get ready for the second part of the tour that will take us down into, you know, the, um, Paracas National Reserve, which is about maybe 250 miles down south of Lima. And um, so um, it's just on the Panamericana Highway. So we just go into the car the following day. Now, after spending the time up there in the mountains, so we just go down into this highway and along the road. We also make some stops, as you can see here, no? And there are some little marshes um, that are close to the ocean, so we can stop there. Look at some non passerines birds, and, you know, like chestnut throated seed eater, drab seed eater. But this is very much what we do. Easy birding, very open views, no? This is one of the species we look for in these, you know, marshes, like parabell seed eater, almost endemic to Peru, we live along the coast. No, and then we finally make it to Paracas and we make it to this very, you know, beautiful, beautiful hotel. It's a four star hotel that is facing the ocean, as you can see, that is called Hotel Bahia, no? And it has a swimming pool that we never use really because there's never time, but um, for using the swimming pool, but at least we have it, right? And uh, here's a, a view of the hotel at nine, no? uh, here in the, in the grounds of hotels, it's also good for some birds. I mean, as I said, the hotel have access to the ocean and it's very close to the reserve as well, Paracas National Reserve. And um, so from the hotel in the morning, we can go and do a little bit of birding. Um, Any time during the day, it's good for birding along the shore, close to the, close to the hotel. We do, uh, great, uh, we do get a lot of waders, shorebirds and all that. And remember, we're close to the Paracas National Reserve. So this is a picture of, you know, uh, of the landscape and the, uh, of the reserve. 
uh, which is actually protecting about 60% Oh dear folks, it looks like Jose might have gone again. We'll just give him a minute to see if he comes back. The joys of trying to run a live presentation from halfway across the world. We'll just give him a few more seconds. It's not looking like he's going to come back. No, he's gone. Oh, he's coming back. Hi. Hi, Jose. Hi. <laughs> I'm afraid you're having why. connection issues. You're leaving us on the on the edge of our seats every time you, you disconnect. We're not sure what's happening. I'm not sure either. Can you hear now? Yeah, we can see your comrades now, yeah. Okay, and can you hear me as well? I can hear you fine, yeah. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. I mean, anyways. And, um, well, uh, Wanai cormorants are also seeing around, you no, know, uh, the name Wanai comes from the word Wano, uh, which is a lot in this island. Uh, then we have... Um, Also a fantastic uh, species of cormorant, red-legged cormorant, and also very easy to get. And the Chilean flamingos that are often seen just by the shore in there. And this is a picture, for example, of a um, the boat ride we do down by Paracas at the Ballestas Islands. You no, know? uh, we take these uh, big, uh, very fast uh, motorized canoes that will take us from the shore to the islands, right? the Ballestas Islands, and, and here, well, these are big boats, mainly used for local people, but we hire one of these boats for ourselves. Uh, sometimes we share it with other tourists, but not many. And here, as you know, it's about half an hour, 40 minutes to get to the islands. And when we get to the islands, as you can see, it's full of uh, birds, it's all covered with birds and all that. So, yep, basically, and um, that's what we do. Uh, there's a lot of good food on the trip, so you know, uh, we have a lot of good uh, fun because we have uh, some of the meals out in the field. There is a nice uh, countryside to see, a lot of Peruvian endemics as well here. No birds that are not found anywhere else in South America. And yeah, great people that we meet on the way, fantastic location, great hotels, especially at the end of the tour. And yeah, you know, always nice to be there. So. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Paul, Ting, Ricardo, for sharing your uh, information with all of us. Thank you very much.